Hi guys, it's a beautiful day once again and welcome back to Dexter's World Channel. I intentionally make this video during the night. Actually, the time is 7 o'clock in the evening and I intentionally made this because I wanted to mention some basic steps in order to breed our Japanese koi. I already have made a vlog about how to breed effectively our Japanese koi. But I would like to make a new vlog about the breeding of this Japanese koi in a very easy way. The first step that we have to bear in mind when we are going to breed our Japanese koi is to prepare a very clean spawning tank. It means that your tank is free from fungus and bacteria. And the other thing is that your water should be clean, meaning that it is not a recycled water, it is not a used water, it's a new water from your faucet or from your deep well. And the kind of water quality can be achieved if you are going to age your water for at least 72 hours or three days. And this had been our practice and it gives us a very good result. So I have here a tank where we already have an aged water for 72 hours and we will utilize this as our breeding or spawning tank for our Japanese koi. And maybe the next question would be, how can we say that our koi is ready to breed? Well, we have to breed our koi if their age is more than two years old. And this is the right age of the Japanese koi that we can say that they are ready to breed. So guys, we will now catch our breeders and this is an exclusive pond for our breeders. And I have some selected Japanese koi here, they're Kohaku kois. As you will witness, this koi are now ready to be breed. Why? Because they have been conditioned already. They were given sufficient amount of food and high protein food in preparation for this breeding. I'm so happy with this uh, hobby because as the time goes by, we were able to establish a system where it gives us a very, very good result. Almost all female koi that are here are pregnant and we are very careful about the welfare of our fish, especially that they are our breeders, they are our bread and butter. And anytime you wanted to breed them, of course they will give us a good uh, offspring. And aside from the good food that they are eating as part of the preparation for breeding, we are also ensuring that the water is filtered, meaning that they will not have issues about the water because it passes through a good filtration system. And you know that our filtration process is very natural. Natural in a sense that we do not use this artificial filter media and even filter buckets. We did not buy this, but we made this DIY bucket with plants inside. And I have already mentioned about the photos plants, which are very effective in filtering the water and ensuring the best quality of water for our Japanese koi. So I have spotted three big fish right here. What I mean is that the tummy is bulging and another here is the this one is the Kohaku and this one is also the Showa female koi and I can feel that the belly is really very soft now which is an indication that they are really ready to lay their eggs. And another thing that I can tell you is that when we are going to breed our Japanese koi, be sure that there is moon. Whether it's last quarter, first quarter, or full moon, whatever it is, as long as there is moon, 
then that would be the best time to breed our Japanese Koi. So I have three choices, this one and this Kohako and this Showa. But I believe that it is more fitting to breed this one because we have here a very conditioned Kohako males. So we will breed this one, this one here with this uh, Showa. You see this one? It's a very uh, beautiful koi. This is a male koi that we can use for breeding. So now I am going to catch this one and we will do this very carefully because uh, if we will mishandle this then they will certainly not also give their egg. I will touch the belly. The most soft will be good for breeding and this one is the final choice. Wow! Okay. So we have finally selected our breeders to spawn their eggs tonight and I hope that this is gonna become successful tomorrow. We're gonna make an update about this. I'm not so sure if they're gonna lay their eggs tomorrow but we will make a vlog whether or not they lay eggs as long as we can explain what is going on by tomorrow. For the meantime, I would like to release them now here so that they can prepare laying their eggs tomorrow morning. We got a male. This is the male. And this is the female, the very pregnant. And another female is here. They have two pairs. Okay, go out. And this one. Very pregnant. I mentioned earlier that part of the spawning time preparation is the fungus free and the bacteria free nesting materials. I term this as nesting materials because they really love to put their eggs or stick their eggs on this uh, nylon fiber and to ensure that this is a fungus free fiber we're gonna wash this thoroughly like this one and you look at this it turned into grayish color it's quite murky because this had been recycled already meant used already many times and then we're gonna put this inside in the spawning tank So we have now set the two pairs of our Japanese koi and then another thing that we can also mention which is very important is to provide good aeration to our breeders because these breeders will not breed if they are gasping for breath. So they have to be given the full amount of oxygen. We have to move the water and with this we can use either the submersible pump or the air pump. But in my case, I am using the submersible pump, but I position the submersible pump in a way that it can give strong flashing of the water so that the water will move and it will, of course, uh, provide good oxygenation to our fish. So guys, I am so happy with the result of our effort because we are able to spawn the eggs of our Japanese koi and as you can see in the nesting materials, there are many eggs that are stick to it and this preparation is actually a proven step towards the success of our breeding of this Japanese koi. So you will see that they started laying eggs at around 5 o'clock in the morning and 
we are anticipating that they will continue to lay eggs until 9 o'clock of this morning. We're gonna make an update about the fry of this. There are many factors that would somehow hamper us from uh, having good fry of this Japanese koi. One of which is the contamination of the fungus and the bacteria. So what we're gonna do is we will cover this one. The egg care is really very important. It's a delicate thing. And one of the common questions that our subscribers are so interested to know is whether or not to aerate the eggs in the spawning tank. Well, I have to say that we will continue to aerate the eggs until it will become fried. In my experience, if you're gonna aerate the eggs, then there is a high rate of hatchability. And also, the fry is very active, as what I have observed. Of course, we have to regulate, because if you will use the submersible pump for the fry, then chances are they will be siphoned inside the machine. So we will use the aerator instead in lieu of the submersible pump. One thing that we have also to consider during the process of spawning is you will observe your breeder koi if they are not chasing that vigorously, meaning that uh, we have to make some adjustment of the water temperature. We will make the temperature cold. So my way of doing this is to put additional amount of water so that the temperature will become cold. It's in the cold temperature that they will be enticed to really spawn their eggs vigorously. After the spawning from 5 o'clock to 8 o'clock in the morning, we will gently remove the breeders out of the spawning tank. And the reason for this is that when we are going to allow them to stay in the, the spawning tank together with the eggs, of course the eggs will be spoiled. Or if it will be hatched, then the fry, the innocent fry of this baby koi's will just be eaten up by their parents and this is the reason why the Japanese koi in the wild could not really propagate as much as they are being uh, bred in in a controlled environment The next step would be the egg care. Uh, we will cover this one because this is directly exposed to sunlight. And these eggs will be preserved by means of putting a cover so that the high temperature will not spoil the eggs. So we will now return the breeders to their original tank. Go out, go out. Wow. Okay, 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 okay. We will make an update about this, the feeding of the fry and the taking care of the fry. And we will also reveal some tips in how to make our baby koi alive and healthy. So thank you guys for watching. I told you that this is my source of joy. I really enjoy doing these things. This is my hobby. And I know that some of you out there can relate with me what I am doing. It's been my business for the past 20 years. We've been able to harvest plenty of koi in the mud pond. And we were able to breed thousands of koi in our breeding tank. And this is the source of our inspiration. And thank you for watching. I hope you will continue to like and share our videos. And if you are not subscribed to this channel, may we humbly ask you to please subscribe now and hit that notification bell 
because we are uploading videos every two days now only here at Dexter's World